Let's see if we can't just... Hey everyone, I'm Okuri and welcome back to the Deus Ex Human Revolution No Og Pacifist Foxiest Pounds Challenge Run. Today we are going to be doing something fun. So fun. It actually involves, funny enough, the police. Today, dude, can you just go away? Okay. <laughs> Today, we are going to be heading to the Detroit Police Station to steal um, a data chip from one of the terrorists that we killed in the... Or that we didn't kill, that we f uh, encountered in the last part. And, uh, unfortunately, I have to c come clean. And admit that I have already recorded this part once. And I messed up. It turns out that you can't do the police station in the traditional way and still get the ghost requirements, which is what we need for the foxiest of hounds. So that's fun. Uh, and as you can tell, we are not in Seraph Industries. I kind of already did all the stuff I'm supposed to do in there. To get us to this point um i mostly just wanted to get it out of the way because i felt like this part is gonna have a lot of stuff in, in it anyway and i didn't really want to bog it down with pointless dialogue that honestly i'd probably just cut through we are going to be doing some side questing stuff as we go on i do actually need to go snag a quick quest that i forgot to do before saving this part we have a few side quests we are going to be doing as we go along here. Uh, the first one is with that guy that you didn't see. Uh, we had to go meet a guy in our office and he asked us to help him out with a issue regarding some stolen neuropazine that he was helping get out of the building. Uh, basically, we are going to help make sure that he does not get blackmailed into continuing what he is doing because... First of all, it's illegal, and second of all, it's very bad. And we're also going to be helping the lovely Cassandra Reed, Megan's mother. Um, basically, she believes that there was some uh, corruption going on during the investigation six months ago, and she wants us to look into it, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we'll be doing that as we go to the police station, but first we have to make a couple of stops. So in the last part, we did get a bunch of stuff that we do not need. So I'm going to be selling all the ammo and weapons we got last time. Whoops, I did not mean to sell those. I will buy those back. <laughs> also going to sell the explosives just so I don't mess up and use them. Yes, I'm not buying them back. Whoops, if you didn't notice, I bought some automatic unlocking devices. We're going to need those because, well, as Adam Jensen, we can't really unlock a lot of stuff on our own. The next thing we need to do, we need to go talk to Detective Chase, who is our informant from Megan, or for, from Cassandra. She wants us to talk to him because he has some information on the case. Um, that will come in handy. Hello there. Well, you must be Adam Jensen. A keen observation. Mrs. Reed told me you might pay me a visit. And don't take this the wrong way, but you're kind of hard to miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. She told me you might have information regarding Megan Reed's case and the attack on Seraph headquarters. Oh boy, what a mess. Total pissing match. We had the feds on our ass, orders from three different departments, and pressure from so many lobbyists that felt like being the scrawny new kid in the prison shower. It is a very high-profile case. Mrs. Reed said you thought some procedures were overlooked. You got that right. I mean, you know how it is. Mrs. Reed told me you used to be a cop. There's always cases where you see the lazy officers taking shortcuts. But this... this was different. Different how? Too much stuff got overlooked. People seemed way too eager to jump to conclusions, and every time I was remotely insistent, 
I got turned down by ranking officers. People wanted to bury this thing fast. That's never a good sign. Surely you have something more substantial than this. Yeah, well, that's where you come in. I got a couple of leads I could never fully investigate. I started poking around, but these government-type agents just gave me the creeps. I, I got scared. Months away from retirement, I didn't want to fuck things up. But you? You obviously have the means to get to the bottom of this. So what have you got? First off, there's a rumor that the order to close the investigation came from higher up. Maybe even outside the local department. Anything like that would have passed through Captain Penn. There might be traces of this left on his office computer. Guess I'll have to pay a visit to the local precinct. Well, well, while you're there, there was an officer assigned to the case, Chet Wagner. He's not what you call a choir boy. And when he suddenly got brought on the case, I got suspicious. Somebody wanted him there. And I'm pretty sure he tampered with some of the evidence. You should talk to him. Find out what he knows. Okay, I'll have a little chat with Officer Wagner. You'll most likely find him in the lobby. He got retrograded from his conduct, and he takes depositions now. He won't budge easily, but I'm pretty sure you can find some dirt on him on his desktop. His office is on the third floor. He might find something there to help loosen up his tongue. Anything else worth looking into? Yeah, when the order came down to close the case, the bulk of the evidence was stashed in a storage locker. Maybe you can find some interesting stuff in there. It's on the alley right next to the station. The code is 40... 4891. But I know an outside agency had access to that locker, so be careful. Thanks for the heads up. Bah, it's, it's nothing. And, uh, oh, uh, please. Don't bother coming back here with details. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad to help. But the less I know about this case, the better I'll feel. That's all I need for now. So, now that we have that information, all we have to do is sneak into the Detroit Metropolitan Police Department and not get caught. That'll be fun. <laughs> got that neural hub yet? You're asking me to pull up a heist, boss, inside a police station. It's gonna take time. Right. Well, if you can't talk your way past the lobby, there's gotta be another entrance outside, in back or on the roof. Save the frontal assault as a last resort. Okay. So, normally, we would go through the front entrance and just talk our way in, but... I think I'm I think I mentioned it earlier we can't really do that the requirements for the foxiest of hounds achievement is actually negated when you go the easy route so we have to sneak our way in and steal all the evidence without getting caught and also have to sneak past these guys I think I messed up I'm gonna have to knock this guy out. Okay, oh no! Don't fall in! Yeah, um, problem. I gotta knock that guy out without him falling in the water. Down he goes. The credits, my dude. I just gotta knock out your buddies. Without them getting killed. This guy right here can very easily fall in. And he might actually. Yep. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Okay. Go to sleep. <laughs> Don't fall in the water. Thank you. I recorded this part already, and I was like, man, this is going to end up being a boring episode because I don't really get to do anything. Well, lucky for me, I messed up. <laughs> and I now have to do all of it again. So I'm going to crack that open. Wait for it to unlock because I will need to go on the second floor soonish. But I need to start on the third floor because that one 
is a little easier, I believe. So I need the auto unlocking devices because at this point, things are already starting to become uh, unhackable for me. And that actually becomes quite the issue pretty quickly as I can't do a lot now. And I'm going to have to figure out how to get a bunch of auto unlocking devices because I'm going to need a bunch of them. I'm really not happy that this guy is already walking away, but I that might have worked in my favor. As I need to get in here. Fortunately, he is going to catch me if I do this that way. So I need to knock him out first. Because he will just quickly come back here. And I can knock him out and put him in that room and no one will catch me. These cops don't deserve this. Like, <laughs> I could have easily just walked in the front door and stolen it that way. But instead... I have to come in here and brutally knock out police officers as I need to. And I can't even show the fun little Easter egg. What? Who caught me? Okay. I'm not totally sure who caught me. I guess maybe he saw me through the door? Should be in the clear. Oh, the camera saw me. I didn't think I was in range. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, we're going to get caught there, but that's fine. Access granted. Crap, okay, um, that sucks. That camera is a problem. Oh, no. Okay, I might need to use a quick... I might have to use the unlocking tool. Poor guy's been knocked out like five times already. Promise, pal. Last one. Can I just stick you in... Here? Probably loot him too. Okay, last time I un I have to knock him out. <laughs> yeah, the problem is the camera can see me from there. Maybe I can create a wall to prevent it from seeing me. Let's find out if this works. Nope, okay, it can see me. Yeah, maybe if I'm quick enough. Trying not to use any of the tools I have. Yep. Access granted. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna have to use a. I'm gonna have to use an unlocking tool. I don't have the speed to deal with the camera and unlock that quick enough. There's probably a quicker way in. Might be able to find a, another way in. Just gotta look, I guess. Not like I'm worried about getting experience anyway. Okay. I'll go through the vent. I was thinking, you know, I could just quickly hack my way in, you know. Get through it nice and quick, but I have to go through the vent. Okay. Luckily, this computer is a level one, so it's easy to get into. Holy crap, maybe it's not. No, it's fine. I got it. Access granted. Okay. 
Fuck you, man. Fuck you. You bro. Okay. Okay, we'll start from the beginning. We got a problem. Yo, man. We got a motherfucking problem, bro. Some of them cats we stomped near the turf in City A are still coming around. I thought we made a deal, man. I'll let you in on the profit, but you have to keep them fucks out of my way so I can make the extra cheese dealing the stuff in the first place. Are you a fucking idiot? What? You also want me to come paint a giant fucking billboard on my lawn that says, I associate with drug dealers. They could be screening my inbox, you dumb fuck. Never, ever leave written evidence, stupid fucking bastard. Anyway, grow some fucking balls, Lopez. Do I have to do everything? Fuck you, man. Fuck you. Okay, so we got that evidence out of the way. So now... We can just leave. I've never actually been in here. But there is a free... Locking device, which is always wonderful. And a credit chip. That's it. We can just walk out and go down a floor. Thanks, police officer, for letting me knock you out as many times as I did. Now all we have to do is get some information on the police chief. And what he had to do with the whole situation himself. And then we can go down to the basement and quickly and quietly steal the neural hub. Okay. So with the police chief's computer, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use one of these because I don't have a way of getting into it properly. And there's no actual code for this computer. So if you don't have the proper hacking, you can't really do anything about it. Okay. So basically this email is saying that we need to shut down the case as soon as possible. It's a PR nightmare. Um, you need to shut about shut it down by the end of the day and they were trying to keep as much of the information uh classified as possible they also ended up changing uh medical examiners which is not normal so that kind of comes off a little strange especially during a case this important Right. Last thing we need to do in the police station, I mean, we need to head back down into the sewer here. All right. Jensen, I have a message for you from one of your former colleagues, a detective Alexander. Jenny, what did she want? She said she could use some help if you could make your way over to Grand River Road. And might I just add, as wonderful as it is to have you back at the office, I am not your personal dating service. Now, we should just be able to quickly get into here. All I gotta do is hack my way in. We should be good. We are gonna have to knock out the, uh, the guy in here, too. Okay, I don't think he's friendly. So, just to be safe, I'm going to knock him out before I take the neural hub. I never actually looked around here. Is there anything worth taking? A credit chip? Let's grab the neural hub. Boss, I got the neural hub. Looks like it's been modified with some kind of wet drive. Pritchard should have a look at it. No, don't bring it here. Frank's not finished running his diagnostic, and I don't want to risk connecting any tech to our networks till he's done. Especially if the tech is military. So what do you want me to do? Take the hub to your apartment. I'll have Frank contact you there. All right. Smooth. As long as I get Ghost, should be okay. I'm not sure if I got it. I might have messed up. I have to go check. I did get ghosts, so we are all good. I just got to get in here and get the last little bit of evidence we need. Pop that open, and we're going to get the autopsy report on Megan. As we read all of these, I'm going to... Quickly, I'll quickly pause as I go through these so you guys can read them yourselves. 
I'm not going to read them all because it's a lot. And then here's the actual autopsy report on Megan. Conveniently, he was killed and burned so that it's was it's kind of hard to identify it was if it was actually her. There's the lab notes. Um interesting thing about her lab notes is that she talks about how incredible of an anomaly her research was and that it's basically the holy grail of DNA, the of DNA research and that it's much bigger than even she is and she doesn't really know how to deal with it pretty pretty interesting all things considered it starts to make you believe that maybe there was more to what even she was uh, dealing with and last but not least we have one last thing to do in the police station that we can actually do in public <laughs> we need to interrogate a certain police officer hello chet yeah what do you want information then go bother the receptionist chrome boy instead of wasting my goddamn time not that kind of information i want to know about the seraph industries case ha <laughs> ha and I want a blowjob and a vintage 05 bar GT, so I guess we both keep on dreaming. Huh, metalhead? I know you handled the critical evidence linked to the case, and I want to know about it. First off, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And second, even if I did, what makes you think I give a shit about what you want? Now, I strongly suggest you take your high-tech toaster-looking ass out of my way before I handle you. Strong words. You're a real poet. Tell me, is that how you plan to handle the judge when they prosecute you for perjury, possession, and intent to distribute? What the hell are you babbling about, Chrome Boy? Funny story. There's this guy, Blaine Lopez. Deals dope near City Airport. A real scumbag. You know him? Because I have a nice little chat record between him and you. So you want to go to jail? Or you want to tell me what I want to know? How the hell do you... <gasps> Shit, man. Now listen. I, I just did what was asked of me. I, I didn't have a choice. Talk. Okay, look. I just came in one morning and there was an email with my new assignment in it. Official business. But there were also specific instructions. I had to check out the lab for footage from an IntelliCam. They told me to take it and leave it near a garbage can somewhere near the lake. What was on it? Well, it's not crystal clear, but mainly it shows the boys who attacked Seraph as they were breaching the labs. And it looked like they were bringing something in with them. Eh, impossible to tell what. Who asked you to do this? You think I know? Orders are orders around here. They always come from above. And Nobody asks questions. You just do what they say, and you hope you don't end up like Secretary Haas over there. Talking about uh, this guy here. We're not going to talk to him. Uh, normally, you would talk to him, and you'd get a little information on how um, we work together. And he killed someone during the Mexican town incident and has been holding on to that for a long time. And then we talk him down, blah, blah, blah. But we're not going to do that. He's just going to continue to be a desk jockey for the rest of his own life. And we're going to go about our day. <laughs> but there we go. We are done with the Detroit Police Station officially. We got Ghost, which is what we needed to progress through this properly. And now we're going to go back to our apartment, talk to Cassandra, and then upload the Neural Hub and see what's on it. Okay, but before we actually go back to the apartment, I thought we would quickly deal with another situation we have here. Uh, first things first, though, I think there's a gun dealer here. No, not here. On one of these floors. I think it's this building. It might not be. So while we're here, I'm going to quickly go and get the evidence that Tyndall has against that one guy. I can't remember his name. 
He's trying to blackmail this dude. They're going to just deal with it. We get the evidence from him. There'll be no problems. Access grant. He might be in here. Or we might have to deal with him. I think he's got traps or something. I feel like I remember this part. Okay. So, I couldn't read the full email there, but here's a junkie with a shotgun. I'm going to get his neuropazine fix. Fortunately, we are not Tyndall. And we do not have neuropazine, but it's okay. <laughs> just quickly knock him out. Hey, Stevie, I'm sorry, man. We just couldn't score as much last week, and I'm all out. I'm not doing this. To you on, I'm not doing this to you on purpose, trust me. I'm looking for extra sources right now, but I didn't get an answer yet. Just don't do anything crazy, Tyndall. Okay, let's quickly look at that email. Brian, you there? Yeah. Brandy's not doing good. I'll take whatever you got. Can we meet? Not a good idea. Gotta keep gotta keep low profile. She's in pain. Neighbors are gonna complain to the cops. She needs new paws, please. Brian, you there? Alright, but I don't have much new paws left. I'll pay. I don't want your money, Mark. Never about the money. What about Corella? Can you score more NP from him? He's getting less and less cooperative. Shit. Didn't you have dirt on him or something? Right here in my pocket, man. But you can only push him in so far. I'll meet you behind the gas station down the street. But hurry. I don't like being out in the open like this. You are the man behind the gas station. Got it. Okay. So we gotta go meet with him behind the gas station. There's another weapons dealer around here. I just gotta remember where he is. Here he is. Alright, let's see what he's got. Hopefully he's got something good for me. He's got a stun gun! Which I do want. He's got a silencer too, which would be very nice if I needed it. Take the stun gun darts. I did accidentally sell the ones I had. There we go. Alright. Weapons dealer. Gun. Hey, Brian. Jensen? What are you doing here? I think you know why I'm here, Tyndall. I want Corella's security footage back. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Seraph Industries' chief of security. I'm pretty sure I can find out about an edited security tape, so don't bullshit me. Ah, oh, shit. Listen, Jensen, I never wanted things to get this bad. I'm not a bad guy. I feel for Corella, I really do. But sometimes, for a good cause, you have to get your hands dirty. Oh. There's a good cause now? Oh, I see. You think I'm selling the stuff, right? I understand why this would seem like an obvious motive, especially to an ex-cop. But trust me, you shouldn't always take things at face value. I'm not selling the neuropazine. I'm giving it away. Giving it away? To who? To the people who need it. You think everyone gets augmented by choice? No. Shit happens. And then what? You're saddled with neuropazine injections for the rest of your life. And that shit costs money. But what choice do you have? Without the drug, you'll die. Rejection syndrome, crippling pain. That just ain't right. So I did the only decent thing to do. I stepped up. Considering we are Adam Jensen, a guy who didn't have a choice when it came to being augmented, I feel like he would very easily be able to empathize with the things he's trying to do. I can respect that. But blackmail is still blackmail. Corella wants out, and I'm here to make sure he gets out. Man, this whole thing is becoming way too much trouble. I've even got two local pushers on my back because they say my philanthropic actions are undercutting their profit. That's not your only problem. A gun-toting client was waiting for you in your apartment earlier. Really? In my apartment? Shit, the dealers probably sent him. Tell you what, I'll deal with the client later. You take care of the dealers, and the footage is yours. Okay. Okay, I'll help you out. But you better not be playing me. You give me way too much credit, Jensen. I'm a security tech, not a hardened mobster. The two bushers go by the name PG and BK. They hang out in the alley near the basketball court. Just make sure they never bother me again. 
Deal. Deal. Okay, so we gotta go deal with the two dealers. I don't think we can talk to them rationally. So that's a problem. But I'll try. You trying to scare me, Skinner? Because you don't. Look at you. What are you, a goddamn super soldier or something? I no. We can't deal with them peacefully. Let's see if we can't just... There we go. <laughs> Done. <laughs> easy. Easy. Take your stuff. There we go. Dealt with. And I only alarmed him. Look, I told you. If you want me to give you that security footage, you're going to have to get those pushers off my ass first. I already did it. I've taken care of the dealers. Now hand over the footage. Thanks, Jensen. Listen, I know it's not something you did from the bottom of your heart, but still, you saved my ass. Here's your footage. And we're going to offer help. Listen, Tyndall, I know you're trying to do the right thing. But we have to do things by the book, or we'll just have chaos. I'll put you in contact with someone inside Seraph Industries. They may be able to get you neuropathy for those who need it. Seriously? You'd really do that? Wow. I never would have expected this from you, Jensen. I really appreciate this. Tell Corell I'm sorry. They clearly were trying to just do the right thing. So helping them out in, in any way feels like the only real thing to do. It, it sucks that even in a time like 2027, people are still struggling to get the medications that they are forced to take when it comes to being augmented. Jensen's incredibly lucky because he's one of the few people who doesn't need neuropazine because he, his augments aren't rejecting his body or his body isn't rejecting the augments. So he's lucky enough that neuropazine isn't something that he needs, but I feel like even he would empathize with the fact that people are out here and basically either having to go uh, through life crippled or get augmentations that could uh, drastically cause them to become addicted to neuropazine. It sucks, but, you know, what else are they going to do? Okay, Corella. Did you get it yet? Adam, please. You have to get that security footage back. I got it. I got the footage. You owe me one, Tim. Yeah, you got that right, Jensen. I mean, thank you so much. This is my life I just got back. Listen, I got a hold of a weapon mod. It's not much, but I figured a guy in your line of work could use it. Listen, I know you were trying to do a good thing, and I respect that. But you should do it through proper channels. Next time you might not get this lucky. Yeah, you're right, Adam. I know you're right. Listen, thanks again. All right. And there we go. We are done helping Corella. Got a laser targeting system that we're not going to be able to use. Hooray! <laughs> So now all we got to do is head to our apartment and then we can finish off not one, but two quests, one involving the range occurrences from six months ago. Have you found anything? Please. I've got to know what really happened to Megan. All right, let's complete it. I investigated all of Detective Chase's leads. You were right. Something was off with Megan's case. So what did you find? I got my hand on a test report that confirms what was bothering Chase. The attackers used excessive measures to make bodies and equipment unidentifiable. Oh my god, Megan. What do you make of this, Adam? I don't know exactly. I guess the idea was to leave no traces, no DNA evidence that would link back to them. But it just seems a bit too convenient. An officer assigned to the case was asked to get rid of a major piece of evidence. Footage from one of our IntelliCams showed fuzzy images of the attackers bringing something inside the labs. What? What were they bringing in? I don't know. But for someone higher up to want that evidence gone, it must have been important. 
There were only three people who got out of the labs alive. Me and two others. One died in the hospital a few days later. The second one, a lab tech, was ready to give a detailed description of what he saw. Funny thing is, by the time the investigators got to him, he couldn't remember a thing. You sound like you don't believe that. I don't. Not from the reports I've read. I think someone got to him first. Someone in the government, a man named Manderley, ordered that a specially appointed medical examiner perform the autopsy. He bypassed the local ME. Simply put, that's not a good sign. It sure doesn't sound good. So what you're telling me is we couldn't find anything conclusive? No, I'm sorry. But one thing's for sure. Somebody's been hard at work covering up and destroying evidence related to this case. Somebody with power who wanted to erase anything that might have made the investigation linger. All right, and we also got a bracelet earlier in a safe that we unlocked, and I'm going to give her the bracelet we found. I'm sorry, Cassandra. I wish I had more tangible answers to give you. But I did stumble on something I think you should have. I found Megan's bracelet. I'm sure she'd want you to have it. Oh, Adam, that's very kind of you. Her grandmother gave it to her. She loved that bracelet very much. Thank you. For all you did. And, um, do you... Do you know exactly how Megan died? I read the reports. She didn't suffer, Cassandra. I can promise you that. Thank you, Adam. It's not much, but it still brings me some comfort. I miss her so much. Don't worry, Cassandra. This is not over. I don't know how or when. But I will get to the bottom of this. I knew I was right to trust you, Adam. But please, be careful. It's strange. I thought knowing what really happened would make me feel better. But nothing will ever justify this. My daughter is gone. And I'll never get her back. I wish. I wish I could be sure she gets justice. Trust me. She will. And with that, the investigation on Megan Reed is finished. How are you, Jensen? I haven't got all night. Hello, Pritchard. I'm almost in my apartment now. Well, when you do get in there, connect the neural hub to your computer. I've created a secure tunnel, and I'll take over remotely. You can access my personal computer. Who do you think configured your security protocols? Okay. Now the last thing we're going to do... For this part is connect the neural hub. Pritchard, the hub's connected. I know. Now be quiet and let me concentrate. I need his name, Pritchard, not his entire genetic history. That's not his DNA. It's the data he was trying to steal from us before he... My God, Jensen. Your suicide hacker didn't kill himself. You obviously didn't see his brain spattered all over the floor. No, no, you don't understand. The wet drive modification in this chip, it allows someone to hack through you. It turns you quite literally into a human proxy. So he wasn't working alone. Someone off-site was doing the actual hacking. Exactly. And whoever it was tried to hide his location by using multiple satellites. I may have just traced him to here, an abandoned factory complex in Highland Park. Get me the address, Pritchard. Because if we're lucky, whoever pulled our terrorist strings might still be there. Adam, it's David. Let me guess. You're sending me to Highland Park. Not just yet. Frank's figured out why the network's been compromised. There's a persistent transmission coming from Derelict Row. Street gang territory? Well, our dead friend was posing as an anti -og. Who better to hide with than the d row ballers? Right. I'm on my way. And I still need you to see Dr. Markovic. Okay. And with that, we are done for this part. We investigated a little bit on what happened to Megan. We also got the neural hub and figured out that our um, terrorist was being 
act through is basically being used as a controller. Oh, we also helped the guy get out of blackmail and helped a lot of people get uh, neuropazine that they need. Okay, but next time we will go deal with the satellites and help keep Seraph Industries secure. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time for some more ASX Human Revolution Pacifist No Og Challenge Run. Till then, bye.